What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound of Attack once again with yet another video for you guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at the AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT. Now this is a, an extreme processor and we are just taking a look at out-of-box performance. No overclocking or anything like that. And we're going to give you guys some ideas on numbers, etc. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so here we have it running and as you can see we have now revealed the cooler that's being used which is the Noctua NHD 15. Out of the box this processor does not include a cooler so unlike everything else in the AMD line this one will not have a cooler and you will need to purchase a cooler separate. It is because this is for enthusiasts and high performance and it does get hot so Let's talk about some of the specs. It's a 12 core CPU with 24 threads. The base clock is 3.8 gigahertz and the max boost clock is up to 4.7 gigahertz. Total L2 cache of six megabytes, total L3 cache of 64 megabytes. It is unlocked and it is built on the seven nanometer FinFET architecture. It supports PCIe 4.0 and it has a TDP of 105 watts, which does seem to go up quite a bit higher once you start pushing it, even without changing any overclocking settings on the ASUS Tough motherboard, the X570. Paired with it is gonna be a Sabrent Rocket NVMe drive, 500 gigabytes. And then we have 16 gigabytes of Trident Z, uh, G-Skill Trident Z Neo, clocked at 3600 megahertz, 18 CAS latency. All right, so what does this all mean for performance? Well, it means that it should be, by all the numbers, one of the better processors for both gaming and content creation that AMD has ever produced, specifically for that high core clock of 4.7 gigahertz, which is the fastest out of the box. Luckily, I was able to hit that 4.7 as advertised on individual cores as we were running all of the benchmarks. Out of the box, it's Cinebench R20 score was 7,129 points, beating out the old Threadripper 1950X, which had quite a few more cores, four cores and eight threads more. During this time in this run, I believe it was 141 watts of power consumption. So the CPU Z score on single thread was 542, which is much better than it has been on the Ryzen processors earlier. And the multi-thread was 8,266. It still falls short in single thread uh, compared to the Intel chips that can hit 5.3 gigahertz. But for AMD, this is a big leap. Now we did test some physics scores in Firestrike as well. And the physics score was 28,970 with FPS of 91.97. Finally, let's move on to the fun part, which is some of the cryptocurrency mining that it can do. And surprisingly, it's pretty good at mining cryptocurrency. On Havencoin with just half of the cores, got running because I actually had something messed up in my config, which will resolve and rerun. We got 1193 hash at about 95 watts. Presumably if we utilize all the cores at the same time, we would about double that score, bringing us up closer to about 2400 and about 140 watts. With the current projected rate, that would get you about 74 cents a day after power consumption costs in Havencoin or 19 cents a day from, of block. So there you go as far as the hash rate for that and that's gonna be Kryptonite heavy. We did also run, of course, a stress test. And when we ran the stress test, we ran Ida64 for 20 minutes and during this time we reached a max temperature max reported temperature of 90.5 degrees celsius so the thing does get steamy and it's pretty crazy i didn't have the, any fan voltages turned up or anything like that once it hit 90 
the fan spun up and it brought the temperature down pretty quick. Idle temperatures are between 40 and 45 degrees Celsius, which is pretty high as well. And you'll notice in the screenshot that when it hit 90 degrees, it also hit 1.5 volts. This is with PBO turned on, on the Asus X570 Tough motherboard, and it may be something you wanna keep an eye on. In fact, locking in some voltages is probably recommended, especially if you're running on air. While this air cooler is the best in the game, I will be testing with some water cooling options with the D5 pump and various EK water blocks as soon as my wet bench gets in here. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. The next is the best algo for CPUs currently out, which is gonna be Random X for Monero. Now for Random X and Monero, we got some fantastic numbers for you guys that I was pretty excited about. We did get all cores running and we did some tweaking and we were at 11,138 hash a second at 141 watts. With that out of the way, that means that we are making somewhere around 49 cents after power costs a day in US dollars, which equates to 83 cents a day in revenue and 0.089 Monero per day earned. Finally, the last gaming test we did was Time Spy Extreme Custom with a CPU score of 6,571 with an average simulation time per frame of 53.3 milliseconds. And as we see with some of the new mother or motherboards, excuse me, some of the new GPUs, it's quite obvious that with the 3080, a lot of people might start leaping back into the blue pool with the 9900K or the 10900K and 10700K uh, to try to remove some of those lower resolution bottlenecks. However, if you're, if you're playing at 4K, um, it's safe to say that Picking up a Ryzen processor is going to a more <laughs> mine you more money <laughs> if you are into that sort of thing, and b be better for uh, price to performance for overall performance, right? So any of your productivity applications and so on and so forth. So these are the few benchmarks we were able to run for you guys today, and I hope you enjoyed them. Oh, yes, and that was Time Spy Extreme, excuse me. Time Spy Custom, regular Time Spy, was a CPU score of 11,545 with the CPU test of 38 frames per second. So that'll wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I'll see you next Tuesday.